Hello everybody, this is HG Shapes here. I'm back with the video and I hope this uh, finds you well and in good spirits. Thank you all for watching the unboxing video and for those of you who have uh, commented, thanks so much. Um, I always feel a little weird doing those because it's like, okay, great, I bought all this stuff and now let's show you about the ridiculous amount of things that I bought. But then again, this is a uh, hobbyist uh, shaving channel and well, it's no secret how these new products get to me. I order them and then they show up one day, right? So um, anyway, thank you all for the support on that. As you might be able to tell, I've been growing out the uh, mustache this week to start um, No Shave November. I'm still gonna shave everything else, but I'm growing out the stash. Um, it's been, well, since the first that I've had this, so this shows you how slow, slowly my uh, beard mustache grows. Um, so I wanted to mention that. And today, as you can tell from the title, uh, we're doing a British shave, which is uh, very exciting. Um, as you'll know, I have the, I have quite an affinity for the British made razors. Um, but beyond that, um, there is a, uh, high representation of Brits in the YouTube shaving world. Um, maybe there aren't as many as it seems, but certainly some of the more popular people, um, are British as it turns out, like Paul H, um, uh, Kebby, uh, Mark at, uh, Friendship Shaving, and then even somebody like Ken Serves, who you think is American, but he's actually a Brit sort of hiding in a, um, uh, uh, well, he, he he is British, but he moved to the States many years ago. So anyway, this shave is sort of a shout out to all those people and also the other um, kind British um, people that I interact with on a more regular basis. Um, I think it's wonderful that you all have such a great history of, you know, awesome razors. And also just that um, it seems like some of these traditional products are more readily available in your country compared to here. And I think that's just great. So without further ado, let's get into the shave. Let's start with this razor, which you perhaps saw in the unboxing video, the Wilkinson Sword Razor in this big box. Now, for those of you who watched that video, is this the shipper? Hmm, I don't think this is the shipper. I think it's just a box, um, and they probably stopped doing shippers at this point because um, this was a little later on. For those of you who don't know what a shipper is, that is the box that they would put around the cased razor, and often the shipper would say the name of the razor and also the price. So those are highly collectible. When you take off the lid, this is what you have inside, and I am looking for um, a version of this case that does include the um, glass because it uh, it's you know supposed to have a lid over top of it, but that probably got lost at some point. And the razor is the sticky razor, as we call it. It's called that because there's some kind of special material on this handle that when you get it wet, it um, well sticks. And as you can see on this razor, it's not perfect because it's missing its end cap over here. But um, if you don't know what end cap is, it's this thing right here. There should be one to cover this side, but there's not. Anyway, that gives it um, a little bit of character. And interestingly, this set came with some of the original instructions here. And I thought we could just read from this for a second. So children, everyone open up your books to page four, and we're gonna read this now. So um, in the beginning here, it tells you about um, the Wilkinson Sword craftsmanship. Um, Something interesting that I saw here, um, right, um, on, on this page here, they talk about how the, the blade uh, end tabs are covered. And so I didn't know that this was something that they talked about um, back in the 70s, 60s. Um, I, I, I think this was 70s, actually. Um, so anyway, it's just funny that that was something that they were concerned about um, back then. And it talks, it gives you sort of an inside look at how the razor is built, which I think is quite cool. So I'm, I'm glad to have those, um, you know, original materials there. Now that about the razor itself, it's a twist to open, as is typical. The inside kind of reminds me of the shape of like a Gillette Fat Boy, just the way that the blade tray is, it kind of reminds me of that. Um, interestingly, it says made in England on the inside, but then there's nothing really on the bottom here. It's just that kind of special material. And you might be interested to know that this was designed by a famous um, British, uh, well, designer. Uh, I'm forgetting the guy's name now, but he designed like a famous train in the UK and also like a certain kind of camera. If you look up this razor and type like British uh, designer, you'll find it. For the blade this week, I decided why not? Let's use a vintage Wilkinson sword blade. And I just kind of grabbed one that I had sitting around in my um, 
box of vintage blades and not realizing that this new chromium edge is actually what people call one of the light brigade uh, blades, which are highly coveted blades. I had no idea that this is what I was unwrapping, but if you have one of these and it says new chromium edge, let me know. I would definitely like to take them off your hands, um, you know, after you've tried them, of course. But anyway, this is a really wonderful blade and um, let me show you how you load it. So the only thing I've noticed with this razor is that if you just set in the blade like that, it's not really in there. So at least on mine, maybe mine's a little old, you have to push down to get it to sit and now it's good. And then when you close the, the doors like that, perfect. Um, no issues with alignment. There is just a little tiny bit of overhang, like you can feel the blade, but it's not enough that it's gonna, you know, give you any problems. It's just like that much right there. So this is a really nice vintage blade. Is it better than modern blades and that you should just, you know, go find a bunch of these and never use a modern blade again? No, but is it good? Yeah, definitely. Um, for the brush, the Simpson Trafalgar T3, 28 millimeter knot. This is a big knot and uh, nice uh, value on this brush. I'll be talking about this more in a moment. Uh, we're gonna be using palm olive, or as they say, at least Paul says, um, he says palm, uh, palm olive. Maybe that's a Welsh thing, maybe that's a British thing, I'm not sure, but anyway. Palm olive here to the Americans. And uh, then we're gonna be doing a double fisted aftershave, which I noticed the Brits like to do some witch hazel and Nivea uh, splash, which I know neither of those are made in the UK specifically, but seems like Brits like to use them. Okay, so let's get the face wet. Let's get into the shade. Wow, we're already at six and a half minute. Yikes. So I was using a, um, I'm just gonna wet the brush through, forgot about that process. Um, I was using a different British um, cream this week. And it was not impressive to me. I'm, I'm not going to mention the brand because that doesn't really do anything, but it was not great. And I was wondering if like something was wrong with me. So I decided let's pull up the palm olive, which I know how this kind of works. And so let's see if it's me or if it was the cream. Turns out it was the cream. Uh, just that, that product did not really work for me. Um, and so, yeah, I don't even know if this was, if this is made in the UK specifically. Um, someone let me know. Do you know if this is made in the UK specifically? Um, I know a big point of discussion often is how it's become a little bit more difficult to find in the UK, but as recently as a couple of years ago, you could still buy it like in, you know, Germany and other European countries. So people thought it was going to be discontinued altogether. And that was just simply not true. So we used about maybe a almond sized uh, amount of shaving cream to quote Mantic 59. And let's go into this face lather here. So as I mentioned, this is a 28 millimeter knot and it's got a good amount of backbone and a good amount of scrub. Um, I was surprised um, at how much uh, backbone this thing had. So if you're looking for a little bit stiffer synthetic, this is for you. You can see how it kind of moves my skin around like that, which some people would not be thrilled about. Um, I don't think it's necessarily like bad the way this is designed. It's just a little stiffer. So you have to keep that in mind. Um, to compare it to my Timberwolf, which that's generally my favorite synthetic. Um, this is definitely a couple orders of magnitude you know, greater in terms of uh, backbone. So if you've never used this palm olive cream before, um, I think it's worth trying at some point. Um, if you're in the EU, you can get it for a couple of euros at, you know, supermarket. But in the US, it can be a little bit more difficult to track down. Um, you can either try to find a store here that imports it for you. And so then they charge you know, a few more bucks because of their associated fees with that. Or you can try to find a friend who can send it to you, you know, from the EU or something like that. Um, that was how I got these. Um, I, I had maybe six, six creams, six shaving sticks. And now I'm only down to one of each because I've given them away 
um, over the past uh, two years, really. So I'm just adding water, splaying the brush. Again, there's really nothing secret to this uh, lathering process here. It's just the only thing is that because it's a cream, you can't maybe add as much water up front compared to using like a, you know, modern artisan soap. So I'm gonna keep going with the face lather and then bring it back in in just a minute when I'm about to start the uh, first pass. Okay, we're back and let's start with the first pass with the Wilkinson Sword Sticky Razor. Here we go. So the, ra the shaving angle is pretty easy to find. This razor. Um, I feel like there are kind of a couple that you could use that are kind of okay. But I noticed that, like for me, I, I want to ride the cap in most cases, but with this one I find if I back it off a little bit and ride the guard more, that makes the shade even better. Just makes it a little more comfortable. Although I don't think the other way is necessarily like wrong. Good. And, um, yeah, how would I describe this blade? Uh, it's kind of sharp, like, I mean, obviously it's sharp, it's cutting, right? But it's not quite as sharp as like a feather, but it's kind of close. Um, I've had that experience with another vintage blade, the Persona 74 Tungsten. That, uh, that blade was super sharp and didn't really lose its sharpness for a long time. I forget if these uh, Wilkinson Sword Light Brigades are known like the Personas for their longevity, but we will see. I'll keep using this until it starts to feel off. Um, yeah, I think this provides a nice little shave. Um, obviously the design is very cool. And definitely unique. Um, uh, it's a unique kind of twist to open design. Working with um, two days growth here as usual. Yeah, it's very, doing this move right here, super smooth. Surprisingly so, because this can be a, that, that can be a difficult spot for me because of the angle and also, I think the hair grows in a bunch of different ways. Anyway, good first pass. Let's rinse. I'll bring you back in for pass number two in just a second. Pass number two. Here's pass number two across the grain with the sticky. Um, so the cream performance you're, I've noticed I can't really get the it to visually look how I'd like it, which is, you know, on par with um, kind of modern, modern artisan soaps, but that's to be expected, right? This isn't meant to do that. It's a commercial product. However, the fundamental thing that this cream does have is the slickness. You know, you really just need a slick surface to shave on, and this has it. Um, something I wanted to show about this uh, 
well, I guess I'll rinse first and then show. Um, so it's got, actually, see, I didn't rinse it all the way. Um, the lather channels are like pretty far in here. So when you rinse this razor, you have to really like get onto the bottom of the razor, like more so than with other ones. So just something to note. So yeah, as I was saying about the palm olive, it's not, uh, it's not gonna win any awards for best cream of 2021, but it gets the job done. And it's a pleasant soapy scent. And it's cheap and readily available in Europe. So those are the things it's got going for it. Um, I've noticed they make some other kinds of palm olive too. Um, I just know them based on the color. So they make a red tube, a blue one. I think the red one just has like some sort of different ingredient added um, to enhance your wonderful commercial lather. <laughs> but, um, and I think the blue one is mentally, you know, You know, that's something I don't know if I've tried. A mentholated commercial cream. Hmm, I don't like so. I'm gonna think about that. Fine, second pass. I did get myself right here, which I noticed on the, I, I, I could feel it on the first pass, but wasn't sure if it was gonna come through. It looks like it did just a little bit. Anyway, that's fine. Okay, third pass, here we come. And here we go, final third pass. Here's the final third pass against the grain mostly with the Wilkinson sword sticky. So these razors are kind of difficult to come by. Um, it seems like they definitely didn't make them in the same quantities as a lot of the vintage Gillette razors. So it just seems like there are fewer out there. But because they're a pretty little nifty design and the shift pretty well as it turns out. Um, there does seem to be a little bit of scarcity going on. Um, so if you have to pick this up at kind of typical prices, eh, you could easily pay 50 bucks or more for one of these. Um, if it's in good shape and it's got the box and stuff like that. Um, but you can always get lucky too, as with most vintage things um if you it's definitely possible to find it for you know much less than that and so yeah if you're looking for a vintage twist to open razor that's not one of the many Gillette styles I would recommend this one to you definitely Something else I forgot to mention about both the razor and the blades is that um, despite being English made, both the razor and those light brigade blades were sold also here in the US. So this says um, Wilkinson sword on the bottom of the dial here. And there's some way to tell whether your version of the razor was made for the US market or the European wrestler world one. And same thing with the blades. Um, Although I think the blades might be more US specific. I'm not totally sure on that. Yeah, it, um, that is kind of an interesting part of the history. And this against the grain move here. Has been super smooth. Just feels wonderful. 
and it's sort of a weird metric to judge a razor by, but in terms of shaving this area, this razor has been really impressive. Okay, I'm not sure what it is about. This, ra um, this area specifically in this razor, but it seems to have worked well. Um, so, seems like we've got a nice three-pass shave. I'm gonna rinse and then bring it back in for a uh, post shave. So stay tuned, be right back. Okay, that was a comfortable, quick, effective three-pass shave. Let's go in with our double-fisted post shave here. We're gonna use just some regular citrus witch hazel from Humphreys. I think this is made here, mm, distributed. Um, it says distributed here in the US, but oh no, it says made in the US too. So American product, but I've seen some of the Brits use this. Um, Woo, that comes out quickly. Um, I don't usually use, hmm, that's not a bad scent. Um, I don't usually use witch hazel on its own because if I'm using like an artisan splash, it's always got witch hazel in it. So I don't see the need to use witch hazel on its own, but I know a lot of guys do. And you know, if it works for you, power to you. Okay, so that's the, Witch Hazel, and then now this very cool two-in-one um, aftershave where you shake it, and then now it looks like that. <laughs> um, thank you to my friend who gifted this to me. Uh, I believe he picked it up on one of his journeys to Europe and then decided to pass it along to me. Um, this has alcohol, maybe a touch of menthol, and the rest is kind of chemical ingredients that I don't um, instantly recognize. But it's a nice scent, um, kind of cologne-y, um, I'd say pretty enjoyable for most people. Kind of reminds me of um, the smell when you when you would walk into uh, Abercrombie and Fitch, like in the early 2000s. Um, maybe they still smell that way, but just that kind of cologne-y scent, um, which is certainly not a bad memory to me. Um, but yeah, this is made in uh, Germany, but sold in the UK and a couple of places here in the US have it, but again, I think they have to import it. So there we go. There was our double fisted aftershave, um, which I normally don't do, but again, I think it's funny that some of the British guys like will use like three or four post shave products, which anyway. Okay, so let's do a final recap. We use the palm olive shaving cream, the classic. Um, fun to use if you've never used it before, check it out, but it's not going to like change your world or anything. The Wilkinson Sword Sticky Razor, uh, cool little razor and um, definitely worth checking out if you're interested in a vintage twist to open. And then the Trafalgar T3 from Simpson, um, a little bit too stiff for me, but not unusable and certainly not a bad brush. Um, so check this out, very affordable, like $20 to $30 for this brush. So that's great. Okay, we made it. Thank you all if you made this far as usual, and um, who knows what next week will bring. Hopefully a modern uh, razor and uh, a modern brush, obviously. So anyway, this has been HG Shaves. Thank you all so much for watching. Goodbye. See you again next time. Cheers.